Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and about a decade ago, Apple came out with the Mac Mini. This is one of the originals right here. It was designed to get PC users to switch over to the Mac by providing uh, just the computer and assuming that the person had the monitor, keyboard, and mouse already to uh, get their switch going if they didn't want to go out and buy a whole iMac and new display and everything. Uh, and that heritage sort of continues here with the new Mac Mini, which we're going to be reviewing today. Uh, but this one costs a lot more in comparison. It's not quite the uh, alternative PC for budget-minded consumers, but it does have a decent amount of horsepower, but as you'll see in the review, it's really half a computer. The other half comes in when you add in an external GPU, which we're going to cover in this review as well to get the full package. And at that point, you're into iMac territory for cost. Uh, so we're going to be taking a closer look at this in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for this with my own funds. We're going to be using this as an editing workstation here on the channel. All of the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor is anyone reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this new Mac is all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. There's not much to look at on this device. It looks like just a single block of aluminum. On the bottom, you've got a plastic uh, cover that can be popped off for upgrading its RAM, the only upgradable portion of the computer. And I found it slides around a bit on the desk as well. So it's well built, but I'm a little worried that it's a little too slippery. They should have uh, put some kind of rubberized coating on the bottom here to make it a little less slick. Now I paid a lot for this one, about $1,400. Uh, that's because I went with the i7 processor. The base model at 799 has a dual core i3 chip, which is not bad, uh, but I think if you do intend to use this for a number of years, you're probably better off getting the more powerful processor. Uh, this computer will be replacing a MacBook Pro that we've been using for the last seven years. Uh, so if you get the you know, the top-end processor, when you buy one of these things, you'll get a lot of life out of it. But I think uh, the i3 chip really in the long term is probably not the best way to go. Now another factor when you are pricing this out is storage. The base model comes with only 128 gigabytes of storage and it is not upgradable. In the past you could upgrade the storage, now you can't because of Apple's new security chip. So you gotta buy that storage up front and 128 gigs may not be enough if you intend to have this be your only computer or your primary computer. That space will run out real quick once you get a few applications installed and start uh, downloading photos and videos and everything. So uh, we went with the 256 on this one just because we do most of our video editing on external drives. That should be fine for this exercise, but uh, generally I think half a terabyte, 512 gigs is probably where most people want to end up or going with the full terabyte. So just be ready for that. No upgrade options there. Uh, I went with eight gigs of RAM though because you can upgrade the memory. Uh, what you do is pop the base off the bottom of the computer here. Uh, that will get you into another area that you have to unscrew. Uh, once in there, the RAM is under a cage. Uh, and unfortunately, you have to pop the entire motherboard out to get at it because the RAM uh, is hiding underneath one of these aluminum uh, parts here on the outer case. They don't make it easy, but you can get at it. So what happens is, is that uh, once you are ready to upgrade your RAM, you unscrew the motherboard and just kind of push the entire assembly out. This uh, black plastic area will just push out. You can get at that cage, swap out the RAM, and uh, put it back in, and you're off and running again. But they don't make it easy. And in fact, when you go on Apple's website looking at upgrade options, they uh, strongly urge you to go to an Apple store to have them do it for you, of course. Uh, but it can be done yourself. I don't believe it voids the warranty, but if you do break anything, they're not going to be uh, very uh, sympathetic to your cause there. So just be ready for that. This is Apple after all, and they don't want you touching their beautiful computers. But unlike their MacBooks, they actually give you a lot of usable ports on here, uh, including four Thunderbolt 3 ports, which are highly versatile and very powerful, 40 gigabits per second each, and that's enough to drive our external GPU and, of course, other things that you might want to plug in. Uh, these are compatible with USB Type-C as well, so it'll give you uh, Gen 2 speeds on the USB side or, again, the full 40 gigabits per second on Thunderbolt. The choice is yours. Uh, but you also get a full-size HDMI port. Uh, this will drive a 4K display at 60 hertz. So you can get two 4K displays going at 60 hertz by using an adapter in one of the Thunderbolt ports along with the HDMI, or you can drive a single 5K display. If you want more, you can plug in a GPU to the Thunderbolt, and then you'll have more display options with whatever GPU you choose. 
You also get two full-size USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports here as well. Uh, that's an unusual thing for Apple products these days. And then you have a headphone jack here, which is becoming more rare in Apple products. Uh, the Ethernet, I upgraded to a 10 gigabit Ethernet uh, jack here because that is an option for 100 bucks. I figured since I'm going to be keeping this computer for a while, I may as well go with the faster network as I do intend on upgrading to 10 gigabit here in the studio, probably within the next year or so. So you can get it configured already with that so you don't have to have another dongle hanging off. And then the power uh, block here uh, just takes a power cable. There's no power brick because the power supply is internal. Uh, so that's nice. Not a lot of power bricks to have all over the place. They built it all into the case here and your power switch is here. Uh, there is a fan on this, of course. You'll hear it, but it's not all that loud. Apple typically uh, has pretty low key fans and this is certainly one of them. Even under load, I haven't really been bothered by it all that much. Although when we get the eGPU going, we'll have a little bit more to discuss about fan noise. Let's take a look now and see how it performs. All right, let's boot this thing up and see how fast everything comes to life. I have it connected up to a 4K display. This is a 60 Hertz uh, monitor from LG that costs just a little over $200. It's 24 inches in size, uh, so it'll be fairly similar to what a 4K iMac would look like. The smaller iMacs run at 4K uh, versus 5K. You can see it comes up very quickly here. Uh, one of the nice things about the Mac is that it does a very nice job of scaling up to these large displays. So you get a very uh, viewable image here that's not too small. Uh, but you also get a very sharp image that uh, looks super nice, especially when you're looking at text or photographs. Everything just looks really, really crisp, a lot better than it would on a 1080p display. And it's nice to see that even an inexpensive display like this one uh, looks great here. Uh, so I think um, you'll really uh, want to look at getting perhaps a 4K display to pair up with your Mac when you get it. Uh, the web browsing experience here, as you can see, is super fast, so no real issues there. Uh, one thing that I did run into with this, though, is video playback on YouTube. So I'm going to run over to my uh, YouTube channel here real quick, and we'll pull up uh, one of my 1080p60 uh, videos that I did recently. And we, we always run this just to see how well uh, some of the higher-end video can play back on a device like this. And YouTube is notoriously bad for... Uh, the types of video compression it supports. But nonetheless, when we're on a PC that costs less, including some of the $200 PCs we've looked at, we generally don't get drop frames when we're playing back a 60 frames per second video. On this device, uh, even on Google Chrome and on Safari, we're getting a ton of drop frames. In fact, it's dropped about half of them so far as this video has played out. So uh, that performance is a bit of an issue for me here, especially out of a six core processor. Uh, I think you may not see this issue in other uh, means of video playback, like if you're uh, playing back something natively via the QuickTime player or using uh, Plex or Kodi or something like that. But for what YouTube uses here on the web, if you watch a lot of YouTube video, uh, you might notice those drop frames. It's not always visible as you're watching the video here, but the Stats for Nerds here reports a lot of drop frames here in the process. But everything else seems to perform as expected, at least for some of the basic tasks that you might do with the computer. So I've got pages running here. And as you can see, I'm doing a lot of crazy stuff here with this image and the text is immediately wrapping around that picture. The video is playing back pretty much the same uh, it was before. So no problems here, just doing the basics with the built-in Intel hardware. Although I'm a little concerned about the drop frames that we're seeing uh, on YouTube there. Uh, now, another thing you might want to do is play some games on this, and that's where the Intel graphics on the Mac are going to become a problem. So let's boot up Rocket League real quick, and then we'll segue into the eGPU and see how adding in another device to the mix here will make a big difference in overall performance. So here we've got Rocket League running, again, just off of the Intel graphics that are built into that i7 processor. And I'm getting frame rates between 25 and 30 frames per second, give or take. So nothing spectacular here. It's playable, but I had to turn the settings all the way down to their lowest settings just to get this frame rate. Uh, so, you know, it looks okay, but not really ideal, especially compared to what it could look like. Uh, now, one thing to keep in mind is that Macs are not great gaming devices to begin with. A lot of the games are ported over from Windows, and 
they often don't really get a lot of performance tweaks. So you always will do better uh, gaming on Windows if that's your intent. But if you have a Steam account and you're using a Mac for some tasks around the house or whatever, uh, your Steam games on Windows will also show up on the Mac if they've been ported over to the Mac without having to buy them again, which I think is a great deal. Uh, so things like uh, Rocket League here should run, but again, uh, not great. Now what I want to do is take out my eGPU and show you what a difference it can make. So remember, we're at 1080p now, lowest possible settings, getting around 25 or 30 frames per second. Let's see what happens when we put in that Thunderbolt GPU. We're going to look at that box first and then see what it does with Rocket League. So this is an eGPU. We reviewed this about a year ago. This is called the Akidio Node. And what it consists of is a pretty ugly looking box here that is currently opened up and it has a slot for a desktop GPU card. In this case, we're using an AMD based card. This is an MSI RX 580 card, which is compatible with the Mac. And one of the important things you have to look out for with the Mac is that uh, Apple doesn't like Nvidia cards. So you have to go with an AMD card that's compatible. And what I'm going to do is put a link down below to Apple's support page where they let you know which cards work with it. They also make some recommendations on enclosures. I like this one because it's no frills. It's about $200 and it works. And it's been uh, great on the PC and it also uh, works here on the Mac. But again, you need to make sure you get a compatible card. And in this case, we're running with this RX 580 card uh, that also cost about $200. So about $400 and change for the case and the card. And the way it works is actually pretty simple is that you take out the Thunderbolt 3 cable that it comes with, you plug it into the Thunderbolt port here on this side, and then connect the other end to the Thunderbolt port on the back of the Mac. And then what you do is just uh, move the HDMI cable over uh, to the card here on the back to get the best performance. Now one of the things that will happen is that if you don't move the HDMI over, it will pass the video through the Mac's internal uh, HDMI output or through one of the other Thunderbolt ports. But what I found in my testing is that you lose a little performance doing that. Uh, so you'll want to connect the HDMI up to the eGPU to your monitor and that will give you the best performance. I did read on the Apple support page though that if you're using the file vault on your hard drive, uh, you have to have it plugged into the Mac initially when you boot it up and then you can switch it over, which is kind of a pain. So if you don't want to deal with that, it uh, looks like you have to leave file vault off for now, uh, but otherwise it's a pretty quick and easy process. So let me put the case back on this and boot up the computer and we'll see what uh, this eGPU gets us for performance. All right, so the eGPU is now attached and we're running the uh, same game here with the same low settings at 1080p and now we're well above 100 frames per second. It goes anywhere between like 100 and 175 frames per second, depending on what's going on on screen. And of course, now we could jump in and maybe uh, increase the image quality a bit here. Uh, so let me do that real quick and we'll see what we get when we turn all the settings up on high. All right, so now we've got the settings turned all the way up, the highest possible settings at 1080p. And we're getting between 60 and 75 frames per second here as we're playing the game. It looks great, and we've got a very fast and playable frame rate. In fact, it is faster uh, with the eGPU at highest settings than it was on the lowest possible settings uh, with the built-in Intel hardware. Now, one thing to keep in mind, though, with this setup is that if we were running Rocket League, even with this external GPU on a PC, we would probably see better performance than what we're seeing out of the Mac. A lot of the Mac games, again, are not all that optimized for performance, but nonetheless, you can see what a difference, at least on a game, uh, that an eGPU will make. But the differences don't end there. Let's take a look now at Final Cut Pro. So here we have Final Cut Pro running on our little Mac Mini here, and I've got this benchmark called the Bruce X Test. And what this does is it renders out this crazy video file. It's two seconds long but it runs at 5K, and this is really something that can tax a low-end Mac pretty heavily. And when I ran that test on the uh, Mac Mini here without the GPU, it took about 80 seconds. 80.5 was the average over the course of running this export three times, so basically a minute and a half, give or take. When we ran it with the eGPU here, 
Uh, this rendered out in only 20 seconds. Uh, 20.5 was the average on that, a significant performance increase uh, using the GPU with Final Cut Pro for this particular project. I think for uh, the kind of video that I do here on the channel, which is mostly sh uh, clips str strung together and just exporting out as an H.264, probably wouldn't be that big of a difference, but something like this where you've got a lot of transparency and a lot of animation going on, Final Cut can make use of the GPU on here and deliver significantly greater performance out of the same computer. But what really got me was that my wife's MacBook Pro 13, which was the entry level model from two years ago, uh, that one did better on the Bruce X test than this one did. Her Mac has an i5 processor dual core, but it has the Intel Iris graphics built in, and it was able to render out that file in about 69 and a half seconds compared to the 80 or so that it took out of the Mac Mini with its internal graphics. That's a pretty significant difference, especially given how much faster it should be versus my wife's computer from two years ago. Uh, so I think if they had maybe put in one of those Intel AMD hybrid processors in here, that probably would have been a better pick because the graphics on this are sorely lacking for a Mac at this price point. And you might wanna look at maybe one of those MacBook Pro 13s because its Intel graphics on that particular model are a little better than they are here. And I also ran the Geekbench benchmark here to compare it with some other Macs that we've looked at. Our multi-core CPU score here is very high, 21,181. And you can see that blows away everything else we've looked at recently, including uh, the MacBook Pro 13 uh, from this year. And that result comes from the Geekbench website. Uh, so you can see CPU-wise, we're doing just fine here. But check out the GPU score. Uh, we're below where that MacBook Pro is. In fact, we're pretty much in line with the MacBook Air when it comes to graphics performance here. But once you plug in that RX 580 GPU, you go way up there to 132,790. Uh, so again, I think the graphics here are severely lacking for the price point, and that's going to impact a lot of higher end tasks that you might do with this computer. And even some mundane tasks do better. Check out that YouTube video we were watching before. No drop frames here at all. Whereas before we were dropping about half the frames playing back this very same video on the Intel hardware that's built into the Mac Mini. So it should be performing better for the price here, even off that Intel chip. And it's really evident here now that we have the eGPU attached and we're not getting any drop frames at all with something that really shouldn't be uh, taxing an i7 processor one bit. So maybe there's some driver issues that Apple needs to work out with the internal graphics. But again, I'm surprised that we're seeing even better performance here with video playback, which is something these Intel chips typically do very well. But the process of connecting the GPU is seamless. You plug it in and you are up and running. Really no problems there at all. Uh, there is a way to force applications to use the GPU. If you go into the get info, there's an option to have it prefer the external GPU and that will always ensure that uh, the GPU is what is powering the application uh, when you do get them running. But again, I do suggest that you plug in your monitor directly to the GPU versus the internal hardware for better performance. So altogether, I'm a bit disappointed with what this machine is delivering, especially given we've got that six core processor inside. Uh, given that I bought this for a video editing workstation, I'm really not going to get the performance I would expect out of something like this unless I have the big GPU connected up to it. And that's where you might get into maybe looking at the MacBook Pro instead because I can easily take that computer away and make it a portable machine, whereas this one is chained to the desk and chained to its GPU uh, to get its maximum performance. Now, of course, the MacBook Pros don't have the same speed uh, graphics that we'll have here with the RX 580, but I have the option to use it if I wanted to when I'm at home and then have something usable while I'm out on the road, which you don't get here. The MacBook Pros can cost a little bit more with a similar configuration, but nonetheless, you will probably be disappointed with the graphics output that they've included inside of the Mac Mini here, and hopefully that might be something they decide to improve 
in the future. They also price this in a really weird way. So when you start looking at this versus an iMac, there's really no cost advantage, especially when you are adding in your graphics. So once you get all this stuff configured here, you might be looking at an iMac price for everything that you decide to put into it, and then the iMac might have a better display as a result. So go on Apple's website, take a look around. I'll put some links down in the video description for all the stuff that I added here, uh, but this is far from a slam dunk. I think it's going to accomplish what we set out to do here in the studio, but given what I'm seeing now out of the performance here, I might go back and uh, look and see if a MacBook Pro might be a better option for our video workstation here. Probably not, but I do think there might be some value to portability. Even if the graphics aren't as fast, they'll still be faster even on the base model MacBook Pro uh, than we're seeing out of a significantly upgraded Mac Mini. So that's going to do it for the Mac Mini. Let me know what you thought down in the comments below. And until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Gerard Newberg, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.